Well, today we continue our journey through the Catechism and its study specifically of the Apostles' Creed. Last week we looked at the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this week we see how the Creed kind of unfolds the work of the Holy Spirit in the Church. And the questions and answers that we're going to look at today's session help us to understand this question of what does it mean to be the Church? And by the Church we mean not just a group of people who gather in a building like this one, but what does it mean to be People. What are the people? What is God doing among us as his followers? And I'll read the questions and answers for us at this time. Question and answer 54. What do you believe concerning the Holy Catholic Church? The answer, I believe that the Son of God, through his spirit and word, out of the entire human race, from the beginning of the world until its end, gathers, protects, and preserves for himself a community chosen for eternal life and united in true faith. And of this community, I am and always will be a living member. Question and answer 55. What do you understand by the communion of saints? First, the believers, one and all, as members of this community, share in Christ and in all his treasures and gifts. Second, that each member should consider it a duty to use these gifts readily and cheerfully for the service and enrichment of the other members. Question and answer 56. What do you believe concerning the forgiveness of sins? I believe that God, because of Christ's atonement, will never hold against me any of my sins, nor my sinful nature, which I need to struggle against all my life. Rather, in his grace, God grants me the righteousness of Christ to free me forever from judgment. I believe in a holy Catholic church, the communion of saints. You know, there's something kind of amazing about the things that we confess in the Apostles' Creed when you slow down to try to absorb them. After confessing our faith in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that one of the fundamental things that we believe about being a Christ follower is that there's this thing called the church, which is essential to our Christianity. Now, it's popular today to claim that people like Jesus, but not the church. But the truth is that a church is indispensable to a person's growth in faith. We're never saved just kind of in general. When we're saved, God brings us into his family, which exists as a concrete group of persons called into fellowship with each other and with Christ. And so if anyone ever tells you that the church is not required, all you have to do is to point to the biblical story of salvation. This story of salvation always takes place in people groups, in the people of Israel in the Old Testament and the people of the church in the New Testament. In order to follow Jesus, we have to go where his message of salvation is proclaimed, and that place is the church. Now, the church is not something new. Already by the time of Abraham, we find God promising to make a great people from those who follow in his faith. You are a holy people, God says, to both Israel and to the church. The church is not a voluntary organization in the sense of our modern clubs and charities. It consists of those who are called by God. In fact, the Greek word for church, ecclesia, means literally those who are called together. We believe in the Catholic the word means universal. It doesn't refer to a specific group. It means universal church. A group, as Revelation puts it, from every tribe and language and people and nation. This church is, or at least ought to be, united in its calling from Christ. Paul speaks of all those everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we have to admit that this unity doesn't always happen in practice, but it remains our goal. We should long for fellowship with other communities of believers, where, to use the Belgic Confession summary of the marks of a true church, the gospel is preached, the sacraments are administered, and believers disciple one another. This is one of the reasons that denominational fellowships remain important, even in a time when local churches often find it easier to do their own thing. Belief in the church leads us to think about those who make up the church. The church, the Catechism tells us, is a communion of saints. The phrase, it seems, originally referred to those who shared in the Lord's Supper celebration and therefore in the treasures and gifts of Christ. Saints, the literal word means those who are being made holy. But, but that idea wasn't limited to communicants in a particular place, but to the church of all places and even of all times. All who share in Christ by faith are holy. In Paul's words, they are called to be saints. That's a pretty amazing statement. How often do we think about the people around us on any particular Sunday as saints, the people who sit in a building like this one? Maybe it would be helpful for us to recover some of the sense of the communion of saints today. But the Bible also tells us how saints treat each other. We have a duty to use the gifts God gives us readily and cheerfully for the service and enrichment of the other members. As the Bible puts it, we have different gifts according to the grace God gives us, and therefore we are to use these for the common good. 
But the Catechism continues, I believe in the forgiveness of sins. And whenever we get to this part of the Creed, I find myself almost starting to get carried along with wonder when I think about what I'm saying. See, it's one thing to believe intellectual stuff about God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's another thing to understand how this stuff matters to me. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. The Church, the communion of saints, is a gathering of people whose sins have been forgiven. It is a community of those whose sins and sinful nature God does not hold against them. We are together because Christ binds us together and he lives in us. We are forgiven by him. We don't have to sin anymore. That doesn't mean it's always easy to avoid sin, but that sin no longer has to define us. As the Bible puts it, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. That's an amazing truth. And you know, the creed isn't even done yet, but there's so much good stuff to take in that we can't handle it all in one week. And so we keep our focus this week on the glorious community to which we belong. One holy Catholic church, a communion of saints, people whose sins have been forgiven.